What's up YouTube? This is Demkeys and welcome to another game development technique video. Today I'm going to teach you how to create an enemy that gets angry when its HP is low. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to start by setting up the level. We're going to create the player, enemy, ground and blocks. Next we're going to set the necessary tags and layers. Then we're going to create bullet prefabs. Next we're going to create the player script which involves player movement and player shooting. Next we're going to create the enemy script which involves enemy movement and enemy shooting. And then we're going to write the logic that gets the enemy angry when its HP is low. We'll also create a health bar or an HP bar in the top right corner of the screen just to show the enemy's HP. Now for those of you that want to start from scratch you can continue with me but those of you that only want to see how I create the logic that gets the enemy angry I'll be adding a timestamp in the description of the video so you can click that and it'll take you to the exact part where I start creating that logic. So let's begin. We'll start by creating a cube. The cube is going to have a box collider. Remove that and add a box collider 2D. All right now to save time I'm going to speed up this process Basically, I'm just going to be creating duplicates of this cube and either stretching it out or repositioning it and also renaming it. And in the case of the player and enemy, I'll also be adding a rigid body 2D component to it. Alright, so we have now created all our objects. As you can see, we have ground, two blocks, an enemy, and of course the player. Let's increase the size of the enemy. Make it two on X, two on Y, and two on Z. Also, our enemy and player, both objects have a rigid body 2D component attached to them. Next, we need to add the necessary tags and layers. Click Edit, Project Settings, Tags and Layers. First of all, we're going to add a layer called Player. Then we're going to add two tags. One will be Player Bullet, and the other will be Block. Alright, now select both the block game game objects and set the tag to block. Next, select the player game object, set its tag to player and set its layer as well to player. Next, we're going to create our bullet prefabs. Click game object, 3D object, sphere, reduce the size of the sphere a little bit, remove the sphere collider, add a circle collider 2D, add a rigid body 2D component as well. Next, create a bullet script. Open this up in mono develop. Here, create public float move force, private rigid body 2D our body 2d and public string tag to kill in the start function add a reference to the objects rigid body 2d component using get component in the update function set the velocity of the rigid body 2d component to let's say transform dot right multiplied by move force in this way, the direction that the bullet actually moves will depend on the rotation of the bullet. Next, call on collision enter 2D, collision 2D call as a parameter. Then if call.gameobject.tag is equal to tag to kill, then destroy call.gameobject. And finally, destroy this game object. So what this is going to do is whatever tag we have set, if the bullet collides with a game object that has that tag, the game object will be destroyed. And finally, the bullet will also be destroyed. However, if the bullet hits an object that does not have the tag that is set under tag to kill, still the bullet will get destroyed. Save the script, go back to Unity, set the move force to 20 and drag this sphere into the project panel. Basically what we are doing here is creating the bullet prefab. You can now delete this sphere from the scene and rename this prefab to player bullet. Also set its tag to player bullet. Next make a duplicate of that object using control D and rename that object to enemy bullet. Change this tag to untagged and over here in tag to kill type player. So the enemy bullet will be shot by our enemy and our player has the player tag set. So if this bullet hits the player, the player will get destroyed. Both prefabs are using the bullet script. So our bullet prefabs are ready. Now select the player and create a player move script or a player script. I'm going to call it player script 03. Open it up in mono develop. Now, before we edit this script, there's something I forgot to mention. Select both player and enemy in the hierarchy. You can control click to select multiple objects and under the rigid body 2D component, expand constraints and check freeze rotation on the Z axis. This basically means that when our player or enemy collide with anything, they're not going to spin. All right. So in the player script, first of all, public float move force, private rigid body 2D, our body 2D, public Public float jump force, public game object bullet, 
this will be our bullet prefab public transform gun make sure it's the transform class gun this will be an empty game object that we'll create later this is where the bullet will actually be fired from public float shoot rate private float timestamp next in the start function add a reference to the rigid body 2d component then in the update function float h equals input dot get access raw horizontal multiplied by move force then rigid body 2d dot velocity equals new vector 2 h on the x axis and our body 2d dot velocity dot y on the y axis so this will handle our movement next input dot get key down key code dot space our body 2d dot add force vector 2 dot up multiplied by jump force this is going to handle the jumping next f input dot get key down key code dot f now let's create another function called shoot and this function is going to be called if the player presses f on the keyboard within the shoot function write if time dot time is greater than or equal to timestamp then instantiate bullet don't forget to typecast it so the bullet will be instantiated and where it should be instantiated from should be gun dot position and the rotation should be transform dot rotation then timestamp equals time dot time plus shoot rate this if condition and this line here are basically how you can add a shoot rate you can control the rate of fire let's save the script go back to unity before continuing select the player and create a child use shift alt n rename the child to gun and reposition the gun to the right side of the player then select player go to where our player script 03 is located and drag the gun object into the gun field also drag the player bullet from the project panel into the bullet field set the move force to 10 and the jump force to 400 and the shoot rate to 1. Now let's see if this works. Hit play. It works. Now let's create the enemy script. Select the enemy game object. Hit control shift A. Create an enemy script 03. Open it up in mono develop. Go back to player script 03 and just copy all of these variables that you created earlier and paste them in the enemy script. You can delete jump force because our enemy is not jumping. Now add a few more variables. Public layer mask target. Private bool target found. That should initially be false. Next in the start function again add a reference to the rigid body 2D component. Then in the update function first of all handle the regular movement so our body 2d dot velocity equals transform dot right multiplied by move force next create a function called look for target here create a raycast hit 2d call it hit hit equals physics 2d dot raycast the ray should be cast from the gun the direction should be the right side of the enemy so transform dot right the distance can be math f dot infinity for our example and the layer mask should be target this is why we had set the players layer as well to player next if hit dot collider is not equal to null that means the player was found and then target found equals true else target found equals false then in the update function if target found let's create a shoot function and if target is found then call shoot now in the shoot function if time dot time is greater than or equal to timestamp the same as what we did for player so let's just copy that and paste it here next void on collision enter 2d collision 2d call as a parameter if call dot game object dot tag is equal to block then transform dot rotate rotate it on vector 3 dot up that's our rotation axis and rotate it by 180 degrees now go back to unity let's just make sure that both our blocks have their tags set properly so what's going to happen here is when the enemy is moving and the enemy hits either of these blocks the enemy is going to rotate and move in the opposite direction now let's set the variable values for our enemy the move force should be 4 the bullet should be enemy bullet be careful don't place player bullet over here next in the the enemy as well we need to create a child rename it to gun change the position and add it in the gun field also set the target to player and the shoot rate to one place the enemy a little lower just slightly above the ground and now play the game and let's see what it looks like okay so there seems to be a problem let's go back to the enemy code and see what's wrong okay so i created a look for target function but did not call the look for target function so let's call it in the update method just before if target found hit save go back to unity now play the game and let's see if it works 
So as you can see, the enemy is shooting and our player can shoot as well. Alright, so now we are going to create the logic that gets the enemy angry when his HP is low. When the enemy gets angry, his speed is going to increase and his rate of fire will also increase. We'll also be creating a health bar in the top right corner of the screen. So go back to the enemy script. First of all, create public int HP, then public int low HP, public float angry move force, public float angry shoot rate. In on collision enter 2D, add another if statement. So if call dot game object dot tag is equal to player bullet, then HP minus equals 30. You can set this to whatever you want. Our enemy's HP is going to be 100. And this line right here basically means that each time the player bullet hits the enemy, the enemy's health is going to reduce by 30. Next, let's go back into the update function and type if HP is lower then low HP then move force equals angry move force and shoot rate equals angry shoot rate add another if condition if HP is lower than zero destroy game object go back to unity set HP to 100 low HP to let's say 50 so if the HP goes below low HP then the enemy is gonna get angry the angry move force should be let's say 16 the angry shoot rate should be 0 0.3 the lower it is the faster the enemy is gonna shoot next let's create the health bar click game object UI slider this is gonna create a slider double click the slider so that it's now focused in the scene and zoom out so that you can see the entire canvas just reposition the slider uh, make Make sure you have slider selected here. Reposition the slider so that it is in the top right corner or wherever else you want the health bar to be shown. The minimum value should be zero. Uh, you can find the minimum value in the slider script component. The maximum value should be 100 and check whole numbers. Next, let's go back into the enemy script and first of all add using namespace unity engine dot UI and now create a variable for the slider. So public slider HP bar and then in the update function type HP bar dot value equals HP. Save the script save the script go back to unity select the enemy and you'll see an HP bar field over here just drag the slider object into that field now double click on the enemy so that it's focused in where our level is set up and just zoom out a little bit and we can now see everything and now play the game as you can see there is a health bar over here and when we shoot the enemy his health goes down now once the health went below 50 as you can see the enemy has now started moving fast he's actually moving a little too fast so i think i should reduce his speed to probably 10 and now as you can see when he gets angry his shoot rate increases and so does his speed And once his HP is below zero, he gets destroyed. So yeah, that's it. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you would like to watch more tutorials, you can click in the top left corner of the screen. And in the top right is a link to my music channel where I post music that I make in my free time. In the bottom left corner, you have a preview for a small game that I made. The links for the project and the game build are in the description down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave your comments below and I'll see you guys next time.